I'm here with Dorothy today to talk about gifts from the Holy Ghost out April 22nd. How are you doing? I'm doing great. We just landed, uh, rolled up in our bus to Philly. We're playing the Brooklyn Bowl tonight. It's very exciting. Exciting times. The new record shows life is good. Yes, life is good. So how was the process for you to convert or translate the experiences that you had, the scars that those experiences left you into this album? You know, um, when I sit down to write, um, I like to kind of, I do a lot of, I do a lot of prayer and meditation. Um, and I can usually tell right away if the, I like to write with people writing by myself is fine and I can do that, but I really like to collaborate and write with people because they bring just something special to the room, um, and to the song. And so, um, you know, I can't explain how it works. Um, when I sit down to write, sometimes inspiration will strike and the words just come. Um, I, I look at it like intuitive songwriting. So it just, and it's not always like this. When it's, when it's you trying to um, make the puzzle pieces fit, it can be a little frustrating and it's not as, it's not as exciting and fun as when inspiration strikes and you capture lightning in a bottle. You know that saying when you capture lightning in a bottle um that's those are the moments i live for and i think i heard a quote from elton john or something if it's not written in 10 minutes it's not a good song not always a hundred percent true sometimes you do have to mold it and it's like shaping an art piece you know or a clay piece you have to mold it but it's it's so much fun when it's almost like you're in a channeling session and the words just come to you and I think they're coming from my subconscious, but also maybe there's an angel whispering the words in my ear. <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot of, it's very satisfying when it happens that way. And somehow um, I just try to be as real as possible and talk about my experiences and put them into the song. And um, that's how a lot of this album was written. So do you look at this album and even previous records as a form of therapy, a, a way of you finding closure answers? Music certainly can do that. Um, and I do it because I love it. I actually really love songwriting because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what kind of song you're going to come up with after the session is over. Um, and that's really exciting. You never know what turn it's going to take. It, it certainly can be therapy um, and it's, you know, not just for me, but I feel like when fans come to a show, they're there to forget about their problems as well for an hour or two hours. And um, it, you know, it's very collaborative with them as well. So I think everyone benefits all around from, from music. And yeah, definitely for me, it's been therapeutic. What's been really great is hearing from fans how much you know this song got them through a tough time this album is undeniably emotionally driven uh, at least that's the impression that i had listened to it from the first moment does that make the album writing process more challenging because maybe it has a little bit more of you in it no not at all um if anything it feels better and it's more it feels more real. It feels more genuine to me. Um, this album I did with le like less cooks in the kitchen, I guess you could say, or less opinions, um, like from a producer or from whoever, you know, um, because I kind of changed everything going into this record. I changed management and look, listen, all my past experiences, wonderful, all learning experiences, all really good. I think as, a, as an artist, you're kind of you either know who you are right away. I think that rarely happens. You're either pretending to be something you're not, or you're on a journey of self-discovery. And this has been a journey of self-discovery, which is infinitely more satisfying to me as an artist and, um, and a lot of fun. And so like looking back, I found what works, what doesn't work. And this album, I said, I'm going to make this album. I called a bunch of friends really, really talented guys that were all involved in the record, like Jason Hook, Keith Wallen, Chris Trainer. Trevor Lukather, Scott Stevens and the Four Horsemen, Zach Malloy, Blair Daly, Marty Fredrickson, Chris Lord Algie, Phil X. Like, I can't believe how many 
incredibly talented people converged on this record, but I felt like I was sort of steering the ship towards a destination and taking all these really fun detours um, and writing these, these songs with people over the last, I guess, two years at least. Um, so it's been, it's been good. I feel like, I feel like this is the most me I've been in a long time. Is the diversity that we see in terms of the sound and execution on this record something that you had consciously made an effort to put forward with this record or is more part of that organic process of being surrounded by all those different souls that are going to bring something different to the table? I think it's both. I definitely made a conscious decision on this record to have as so many different rock and roll influences from different genres that inspire and influence me on the record because I want this album to be for the fans and for them to find something that they really love in it and everyone has different tastes in music so um and I I I love so many different types of music I I included a lot of it just yeah it's very eclectic it's hard to manage that eclecticness when you think because you, you you're looking at the individual songs but you also have to think about the overall context of how the album is going to sound like it's going to feel like so is that a little bit of juggling balls and, and, and creating a little bit of a challenge at times? You know, that's kind of where Chris Lord Algae stepped in because he mixed and produced uh, the record and uh, having, you know, the key musicians involved. And then I'm, I'm singing everything. So there is a strong theme that, you know, kind of like stitches everything together beautifully. So I don't think it was a problem at all. I think, um, you know, Chris knew how to bring it all together in the mix. And um, if anything, I just think it makes for a really interesting album. I, I thought your voice was definitely the glue that hold it all together, but there's another cornerstone on this album. That is the guitar sound. The guitar sound was really interesting. I really like how it felt, how it came across felt very warm at times, but it also felt very gritty at others. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the idea behind behind the specific sound guitar wise on this record? So multiple people played guitar on this record. Scott Stevens played on Rest in Peace and Black Sheep. Uh, Sam Colton played on Made to Die, you know, um, Keith Wallen played. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, that was Sam played on Made to Die. That's Keith's song that I wrote with him in Nashville. Um, Phil X played a lot of guitars and sang a lot of background vocals and Trevor Lukather, Steve Lukather's son, a good friend of mine, produced and played and co-wrote um, Top of the World, uh, Touched by Fire and Hurricane. So there's a lot of different guitar and um, I, I noticed I tend to gravitate towards strong guitar players as songwriting partners because I can't play like them. I wish I could, but it was just never my passion. Um, so, so they, they, it's like very, uh, um, symbiotic, the relationship that we have. I need a strong guitar player always because I'm a rock singer. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it, when it comes down to the mixing and putting the album together, are you hands-on or, or you completely leave that to the people around you that you trust with, with the job at hand? Chris Lord Algae is the ultimate, I'm, I, I'm in the most capable of hands. I couldn't. You know, I might have a note here or there very rarely because he really knows what he's doing. And so I just felt like I was in the most capable of hands and I didn't have to do that, which was really, really nice. <laughs> when it comes to your vocals, I already said, I really feel like they are definitely the glue, the cornerstone that holds this record together. Did you prepare differently vocally for this album? Oh, yeah. The vocal approach on this album, learning from the past two and what sounded really good good or what made me kind of cringe in the past just for me personally we are our own toughest critics i had joseph mcqueen um track a lot of my vocals and i vocal produced myself with him and comped everything and then we would send it all to chris lord algae who would mix it and um and I like, you know, we, we recorded on a manly microphone. Joseph is great. He's fast. He's easy to work with. He captures the energy that I'm looking for. And I didn't have anyone kind of inserting their opinion on my voice because it's my voice and I've learned how to use it. And I, I know what I feel sounds good. Um, and I try not to get it too perfect because too perfect can take the soul out of something and become sterile and robotic. But you know, I think we found a groove that worked really well. And so, 
you know, I feel like I kind of produced my vocals, I guess. And then, but I also recorded with um, Trevor on his songs. Um, and I would comp with him and his engineer. And then I, uh, and then when I recorded Rest in Peace and Black Sheep with Scott Stevens, I just left it to him. So he completely took over my vocals. He's an incredible producer. Um, so it was just kind of a case by case basis on, on each song and who I'm writing with. But the bulk of it, Joseph McQueen and I handled a lot of the vocals and then Chris just took it home. How do you handle your, your voice on the road? Do you have a system? Do you have a plan? Do you, do you have like this, this ironclad workload that you set yourself with in order to keep everything fresh and keep everything moving? Lots of sleep, no partying, trying not to talk during the day, um, warming up before the show. I turn on the steam shower taking good care of my body and just being, you know, uh, being relaxed and trying not to blow, blow too hard on stage at times, knowing when to push the gas and knowing when to relax and lay back a little bit. It's all, it's all no, knowing yourself basically. Yeah. Knowing your voice. Uh, how, how is the lyrical content for you? How do you work with the lyrics? Do you let the music, uh, take you there? Or, or you're someone who writes a lot of the lyrics or at least pieces of those lyrics throughout the time. And then when it, times, when it comes time to put a record together, you kind of go back into that black book and draw some inspiration. I don't really have a black book. I go in the studio with nothing and I get a piece of paper and I start writing. Or I'll have a, a song title idea or a concept. And like, I would tell Keith Wallen, he's, a, he's an incredibly talented guitar player for Breaking Benjamin. And that guy can sing anything. He's got a really amazing voice. I would give him like, you know, titles or concepts and ideas and he would build a track and then we would kind of um, write the song, the lyrics and melody together. He's incredible with melody, with vocal melodies too. Um, I mean, he could write, he could also write pop songs, you know, like that would just get stuck in your head. Uh, but I like to go in kind of pure and just, see what happens and write from the heart. But occasionally I will have just lyrics that come that I write them down sort of like a poem and hopefully can put them to a guitar riff. It's, it varies, it's just, it just depends on the song. Is there a song on this album that maybe not musically or vocally, but maybe lyrically, it has a different impact on you and that made the song perhaps a little bit more challenging to deliver? Um, I think. No, not really, but we had a song called Spokane Fire. We wrote it during soundcheck when we were on tour with Greta Van Fleet. But that song became the title track, Gifts from the Holy Ghost. And I, that piece of the puzzle didn't get put into place until I had the album title. And I remember I was in my hotel room in Brooklyn because we did the first bulk of recording in, in New York at Studio G. Um, but then we went back and kind of redid a few things and shaped the album to where it is now. But I woke up one day and the you know I didn't even know what it meant I just woke up and this this sentence popped into my head gifts from the holy ghost and I went oh my god that's the album title so I wrote it down and then I sat sat with it for a bit and I went in the studio and I'm like I definitely have the album title and I remember always 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 loving the song Spokane Fire but it didn't feel complete to me and then when I had the album title I had the lyric in the chorus gifts from the holy ghost for the song and it changed the song title and it finished the album. Wow. So we went full circle. Really interesting. I, ha I have one more question for you. Uh, when you look at Dorothy from the debut record and you look at Dorothy, Dorothy from now, uh, not necessarily as a musician, but as a person, how much has, have you grown and how much have you evolved? Oh man, I feel like I have lived so many lifetimes. It's wild. I, I can't even, I don't know. I, I never think we're like, complete I feel like we're on this human journey and we get to like have all these experiences and um grow and learn and I'm definitely a much more um patient and compassionate person than I used to be um, and I just I attribute that to being in recovery and to God and you know I just look for ways to try to help people every day and that not that I'm like oh I'm so great and I'm tooting my own horn but really 
if I live the other way around, it's very empty and it's very unfulfilling. And I found that if you want to be happy, you have to give love and you have to give and be of service. And that's how you fill your cup up and you're overflowing. So you have more to give other people, but you also have to know balance and self-care. Like when you're depleted, you have to know when to step away and say, I need a minute, you know, I need, I need to rest or I need to, to rejuvenate myself somehow so that I can come back feeling positive and have a positive impact on the world, the world and, you know, your immediate circle and the people around you is where you can make the most uh, difference sometimes. And so I try not to overlook any of that. Well, Dorothy it was an absolute pleasure speaking to you today. Thank you for taking the time. Best of luck with the show tonight and best of luck with the album. Thank you so much. We hope to come to Canada soon. Oh, I, I hope to see you guys in Toronto at some point in time. Let's keep our fingers crossed. For sure. See you later. Take care. Bye.